All right, hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, so my name is Shanil Fernando. I'm the Chief Technology and AI Officer of Cut and Dry. We're actually a, a, a startup um, based out of San Francisco. Um, I personally have been in the global IT industry for a very long time, so over 25 years. 28 years to be exact in August, uh, August this year. So um, being involved in building a lot of technology here in the US, in Europe, um, um, you know, from open source technologies to products, to platforms, to SaaS um, software. So today, what I wanted to do is um, <clears throat> give you some of that experiences that I have had uh, in working with these different technologies. Um, at Cut and Dry, I'll talk about Cut and Dry, which is actually a vertical SaaS product that we're building for the food service industry. Uh, and the journey that we went through to um, decide whether to go to a, use an open source solution versus a SaaS solution, right? Uh, I'll also talk about the state of open source today. I think my predecessor talked about quite a lot of it, and I uh, echo a lot of the sentiments. But I also believe there's a, a significant push uh, and an evolution that's happening for SaaS software, right? So I'll spend a little more time um, on that. Personally, <clears throat> having gone through many case studies myself and built a lot of technology, I think there's always a case for um, uh, open source software and there's always a case to when to use uh, SaaS. Um, uh, and I'll talk about my experiences with them. And if time permits, I'll talk about some of those case studies as well. So uh, I wanted to spend a little time on cut and dry, more than, more than anything else, not to boast about cut and dry, but to understand the SaaS product that we are building. And it's important to understand the industry. <clears throat> so the, uh, the product that we're building is a SaaS solution. I would call it a vertical SaaS solution. We're building an operating system for the, uh, the entire food service industry, right? Um, a little bit about the food service industry, because uh, this is not very familiar to everyone. Most of you and all of you know what uh, the, the, the front, what we call the front of the food service industry, which are all restaurants, right? Uh, there are approximately a million restaurants in the United States alone. Uh, you know, there's McDonald's, Burger King's, the independent restaurants. That's, that's on, that, on that side. In the middle is a very, very important constituent of the food service industry. It's actually what we call the food distributors. There are approximately 15,000 food distributors in the United States alone. Cisco, Gordon Foods, and US Foods being the largest, right? Um, and then there's the manufacturers. You all have heard of Nestle's, Unilever's, Johnson & Johnson's. They're the people who actually build uh, the food, right? The ingredients that go into the restaurants. The guys in the middle, they play a huge role in making sure the products that are, uh, the, the food that is produced here is distributed all over the, you know, for example, in the United States or anywhere in the world, right? So this is an amazing ecosystem um, and uh, an industry that's ripe for technology disruption. And that's exactly what we are doing, right? So if you look at the restaurant industry, there's already a lot of technology already in there. You all are familiar with Uber, Grubhub, Payments, Square. All of that stuff happened, I would say, in the last 15 years. And they're very familiar with this, right? But if you look at these two verticals of this industry, they're still very, very low in tech adoption. And that's where we really come in. What we are building is an operating system for the entire food service industry, right? It's a, it's a massive task. It's a $2 trillion uh, uh, market uh, that we are trying to address. Um, and again, I'm talking a bit about this team here because what you, what you would see is when you buy a SaaS product or you're uh, integrating a SaaS product, you get a lot of experience that goes into that product, built into that, uh, that solution, right? So for example, the product that we're building here, um, we've been working in this industry for over 15 years, right? Uh, the food service industry is complex. When we got into it, we didn't know it. But in the last 15 years, we've built a lot of um, knowledge that we're actually putting into the product, right? Um, so collectively, our leadership team alone has about 75 years experience in this uh, industry that we're actually building into this product. That's not easy to do. And that's one of the biggest advantages of a, what I call a SaaS company, right? Because you get that knowledge and that domain upfront when you start with SaaS, a SaaS product, right? All right, so I'll tell you about the challenge that we had as we started. Um, <clears throat> so I, I showed you um, the, the distributors in the middle there. There are 15,000 distributors in the United States alone. And each of them are running different, different 
uh, ERP systems. Some are on modern technologies like SAP, SAP, and, and uh, Oracle, and some of the more advanced ones, but we also have uh, distribution partners who are on AS400, very old legacy systems, right? So our biggest challenge is how do we integrate with this? Because our core product is actually an e-commerce product that sits on top of all these different ERPs, right? So we needed to integrate with over a thousand different ERPs. Roughly processing about a million transactions uh, orders a day. Needed to be uh, uh, real time, I need to be fault tolerant, right? So these are some of the different different types of ERPs that we need to integrate with. So our, our, our use case here was, okay, what do we do? How do we go about doing this? Now we're at a stage where we really need to significantly scale it, and what's the best technology platform to do this, right? So our vision was to build this world-class um, uh, integration platform. So um, this is one piece of technology of cut and dry, but a very important piece of technology. It's not the, but the, the uh, the front end of it, but the integration to the ERPs uh, are a significant part of it, right? Uh, high uptime, fault tolerant, real-time monitoring, uh, and we are integrating with these distribution, distribution partners you know, daily, right? And how can we do this fast? Uh, how do you get this data out of their system? How do you push data into their system? How do you ensure that our, our systems are in sync? Uh, and can we use low-code development for this rather than having to have um, expensive engineers, right? And we needed to be able to integrate with any single ERP, right? Any, any, any type of ERP. So a complex problem, that, and that's the vision we had. Uh, and how did we start? Originally, we built this ourselves. We, we, we have, even today, we have that running, um, uh, a platform built by ourselves using PHP. Um, and you know, it worked well to get started, right? Um, then we started with um, Im implementing my, um, uh, WSO2, a micro integrator, open source product that's out there. Um, and we found that there's a lot of out of, out of the box fun functionality, but it took a lot of time for us to, uh, it took a lot of engineering resources. We are a startup, so we have to be very, very careful with how our team spend um, their, their um, uh, time. Um, and we, we realized there's a lot of technology um, knowledge required to implement a solution like that, right? So um, then we, spoke to WSO2 and got in front of Corio, and I think it's an amazing platform, a fantastic SaaS product, very early uh, still in their maturity, but it gave us a lot of uh, advantages, right? Um, the, you know, the productivity, the flexibility, flexibility, cloud native, it can run on anything, we are on AWS, but it, it can run on uh, Google or any other uh, platform. Fast time to market, I talked about um, the um, uh, domain that that they that you get when you have a SaaS product. We found that um, all in in Corio. Um, some of the stuff that came out of the box. Uh, some of the stuff that came out of the box. Um, sorry, it's like this. The DevOps and the CI/CD in integration. We didn't have to manage scalability. We built our components, we built our libraries, and we put it on the platform and it, it, it runs and the platform looks after uh, everything, right? The monitoring, security, um, and the current state, we're actually uh, launching it this, uh, in the next couple of days with some of our distribution partners and so far it has been a fa fabulous uh, journey. Uh, very important, time to build the POC was very fast, right? Uh, uh, we didn't have to spend a lot of uh, technical know-how to get the product up and running. In a, very, in a couple of weeks, we were able to do a POC, evaluate it, yes, this is a good platform, and, and run with it. So let me talk about, my, my predecessor talked about uh, open source. I think we're going to talk, talk something very similar, but there may be some controversial things, so I, might, I apologize in advance. Um, this is a state of open source report by OpenLogic, uh, a leading provider of uh, open source technology. Uh, and uh, support, um, may, maybe a competitor to WSO2, I don't know. Uh, but if you look at it, there's still a very strong um, um, need for open source, right? Approximately 95% of respondents said their organization either will increase or maintain their investments uh, in open source, right? Um, but what are the top five reasons here, right? And if you look at uh, the first couple, I think that's what's going to be co uh, contentions uh, in the few, next few slides. Number one, there's no license costs. The cost is the, one of the biggest uh, drivers that was 
um, um, a value add for open source, a lot of functionality available out of the box uh, and the community and so on, right? But those top three things, if you uh, just remember those, um, there is a contender to this. Um, here are some of the different things that's been uh, built. Database technologies, cloud and uh, container technologies are kind of the uh, database and uh, data technologies are the ones that have been used most. But the top challenges, I think, again, my predecessor talked about this, security policies and compliance, maintaining end of life, and you know, lack of technical support, right? Uh, in my, even in my experience, open source is fantastic, gives you a lot of stuff, but you need to have a strong technology organization to be able to um, uh, manage and run with it. So have a look at SaaS, what's happening in the SaaS world. I think there's a, a trend here where we're seeing a significant push towards SaaS-based product, right? If you look at the history, um, the real first SaaS product that came out was Salesforce. And, and, and that really paved the way for the others that came out, I believe, in 1999. Um, and then in um, you know, mid-2000s, we, we saw the rise of cloud computing. Uh, and now what you're seeing is really mainstream adoption and expansion. So many SaaS companies are coming out. And I personally believe the future is really what we call vertical SaaS companies. And I'll talk to you about that. Um, here's the global SaaS market. You can see um, it's you know, from around two, 200 billion. It's growing to about uh, 800 billion plus in the next uh, um, you know, ten, less than 10 years, so uh, a massive growth there. Um, and wh why is it that SaaS is becoming so popular, right? Uh, it's really because of the low cost advantage that it brings. I told you, uh, one of my previous slides talked about uh, how uh, open source is uh, less, it is it, one of the main reasons people use open source is because it was uh, cheap. But this is becoming very cheap and it's becoming much more affordable and, and, and very fast to implement, right? Um, so why is this total cost of ownership going down on, uh, and why is it that SaaS vendors can actually provide uh, big solutions at very low cost, right? In the past, you know, my, myself included, we used to build software. We had to, we had to actually physically go and deploy it there, manage it there, remote management was not available. Um, uh, you know, updates were very difficult. Um, and you, you were restricted by actual physical access, right? Cloud computing has made that all go away. Everything is in the cloud. You don't need to even go to a customer. You, you deploy a solution to the cloud. You can maintain it and manage it from everywhere. The customer, and, and, and more very importantly, the, the, the market. The market is a global market, and it's not constrained by any physical um, uh, situations, right? So what you're seeing here, uh, is the total cost of SaaS products are continuing to go down because of these three reasons. In the past, even, uh, even a technology like Microsoft, right? We used to use Word, Excel, we had to download it, run it on our computer. It was expensive. But now you can, uh, it's all uh, offices available online and it's at a very minimum cost and affordable. It's really, it has democratized technology and that's exactly what SaaS is doing. Okay, um, talk uh, a few minutes about uh, horizontal and vertical SaaS, right? Um, I personally believe vertical SaaS is the future. Uh, what's the difference? Horizontal uh, SaaS is you know, the, uh, a platform or a technology that goes across multiple different industries. You all are, you all are very familiar with this. Microsoft, um, Google, Slack, all of these are Solutions, even WSO2 would fall in this category, are solutions that go across uh, um, um, uh, um, different uh, industry industries, right? Vertical SaaS companies, on the other hand, is actually focused on a specific industry um, and targets a specific audience and, and uh, are fully focused. And, and I talked about that domain knowledge that comes in, and, and these products are built on top of that domain knowledge and provided as a SaaS solution, right? Um, if you look at the wave of uh, uh, evolution here in technology, you saw the first wave, which is really mainframe. You saw that in the 1960s and so on. Then you got client server technologies in 1980s going into 1990s. We're very familiar with all of that stuff. Then you have a lot of horizontal SaaS companies going into the late, late 2010s and so on, right? 
But now, if you look at it, what, what's driving real market value on top there, you know, very recent market values are in the $700 billion range, is really vertical SaaS companies. Again, companies that are providing very specific, industry-specific solutions. And again, these are provided with a lot of domain going into it at a very, very affordable price, right? All right, so uh, that was a comparison between the two and what's happening, but there are always situations where one or the other technology will work out, right? So I'll give you a few examples. Speed of development, I personally, this is based on my experiences. I feel the, the SaaS world now is much faster because it's, uh, you can, you know, you don't have to download it, it's available online. Within, within days you can be running your application. Initial cost, in the past, open source technology was cheaper. But now, with democratization of technology and SaaS solutions, you're getting um, uh, these things at uh, a very low cost. As a, as a startup, um, most of the solutions that we work, we get you know, startup credits. It's free, free to get started. So there's a lot of uh, value that's been um, derived from that. Ongoing costs, um, I'll, I'll, give you a, I'll talk about a case study that I've been personally involved in. Eventually, the total cost of ownership becomes um, much more um, affordable in a SaaS solution. Obviously, if you want to own your technology, you want to run it on your, on your own services, on, on your own servers, you own your own IP, I would say open source is definitely the right thing. If you have a large technical team and you, uh, you need a large technical team, and if you can do that, yes, open source uh, uh, is the right way. But if you don't, then um, SaaS is definitely the right way. Domain, again, you get a lot of domain with SaaS solutions. Um, you don't have vendor dependence. Definitely, if you go with a SaaS solution, you have uh, vendor dependence. Uh, flexibility, security, I mentioned, you know, um, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about it, right? If you have an open source solution, even my predecessor talked about it, security is a big concern. Here, you don't have to really worry about it at all. Scalability is, again, not something you don't have to worry about. So there are different use cases for each of these solutions, right? I'll talk about two case studies um, that I have been personally involved in. My, my second company that we, start, uh, we started and sold, um, we, we, it was a cloud-based PR solution. We, used it, we, we wanted to get something out, uh, out of the door fast, um, and we used this product called Open Bravo. It's an open source solution, and um, we wanted to get this functionality out. We want to get this into the restaurants, uh, and rather than us trying to understand restaurants, how they work, we started using open source. It was great at the beginning. It really helped us kickstart our company, but o o over time, what we really realized is that the technical depth required to maintain and grow and support this, this product was uh, uh, diffi very difficult. Eventually, we had to actually scrap it uh, and rewrite the whole thing um, from, from zero. So here's a good example where we had our core company running on an open source platform. I would never recommend that. Um, uh, certainly not a co-competency co of your company should be running on uh, a, a platform like that. Second case study is for a large Fortune 100 company that I used to work for. And um, API management, we needed a, a good API management product to you know, orchestrate all the high performance um, requirements of APIs. We looked at an open source solution, great, got it going. Fantastic level of uh, transactions, but over time, what we realized is that I, I needed a large team to maintain this uh, platform. It was, it was get growing larger and larger, and it was much more cost, costly. Um, um, you know, things like security vulnerabilities, being on top of patches, all those things became um, uh, difficult. Um, and eventually, um, when I looked at the total cost of ownership of this open source based solution with my team versus a SaaS product that was out there, the, the total cost of ownership was much more effective on the SaaS product, so we actually migrated to the SaaS solution. So in summary, um, I think if you really want to own your own software and you have a good technical uh, team, I would say big enterprises fall into this category. Um, I think an open source uh, solution will be ideal for you. But the cost advantage of uh, open source is certainly diminishing, and I, I personally believe the future is SaaS. 
Um, and as I mentioned, vertical SaaS companies, industry-specific SaaS companies, uh, will, will be what's going to be prominent in, in the next, next de decade or so. Thank, thank you very much.